Welcome to the Potter's House. You've just arrived at the Potter's House main office in our one residential setting here in New Holland. And I'm Lloyd Hoover and I'm here today with uh, Lanny Millett, our program director, and, and Jean Carmack. And Jean is a graduate of our program here and presently serves as house manager. If you have arrived here today and have not come directly from prison or from a, an addiction uh, detox center, you can consider yourself privileged because most of the individuals coming in here through these doors are individuals that just spent months, maybe years in prison or just weeks in a detox center. We work with a approximately 50 to 60 men each year that are looking for an opportunity for a new beginning. Uh, we believe that individuals that are uh, looking for a new beginning after times with addiction or scuffles with the law should be given an opportunity. And we've been there for nearly 20 years now, helping individuals uh, not only to recover from an addiction, we want them to also become a contributing asset here in our community. So I'm going to uh, look to Lanny to give us a little direction uh, in light of what we do here at the Potter's House. Coming out of prison creates a lot of problems for the men who come to Potter's House. Our goal and desire is to provide for them a place of transformation, of healing, and of hope. Uh, we do that by um, providing someone to go to the prison to meet them as they're coming out the door. So many of them hear a negative message coming out the door. You'll be back. I'll see you in a month. We have someone there saying, hey, it's good to see you. Pray with them on the way. Give them a good start to a new life. When they come to Potter's House, they have a safe place to live. They have uh, good nutrition. We help them to restore their identity because most of them have lost their wallet. And uh, it's very difficult to get a birth certificate if you don't have a photo ID or a photo ID if you don't have a birth certificate. So you can see it's a catch-22. So what we do is try to help them get their feet on the ground. Then we will work with them to look at uh, finding a job. And uh, it is difficult to find a job when you have a criminal record, but there are folks in the community that will help. And we get them connected with those kind of folks that will help them get a new start. There's also a lot of relationships that have been bruised and fractured, and one of our goals would be to help them with reconciliation in those relationships. We work with financial management, many don't know how to manage their money. So we will initially have them turn their money into us and sit down together and come up with a financial plan and learn how to save money as well as to pay bills and to, to learn accountability in a lot of different ways. It's just a real variety of tasks, but first and foremost, what we want them to do is to understand that Jesus loves them and that they can experience his transforming power in their life. And it's only in that transformation that life will change for them. So Potter's House has a very broad-based program, and uh, we are eager to work with, with men and give them that opportunity to experience new life in Christ and be contributing members of our community. Hey, Gene. Can you share a bit of your story from your experience, from where you came from and how you have uh, found new hope in your life? Sure. Um, here at the Potter's House is probably where my story began to have the most hope in it. For a better part of a decade of my life, I was back and forth in and out of addiction and I tried every solution that there was. And. Uh, it all ended in a hopelessness that ended with me that had a heroin needle in one arm and meth in the other and a bottle of liquor whenever I needed it and there was just nothing left inside of me. And uh, after, after I got clean in a rehab and I found my way at another recovery house, there's a gentleman that's on the board of directors at the Potter's House that uh, indirectly led me here. Um, he didn't encourage me to come here, but that's the only way that I ever heard of this place. And God led me here. And I listened to his voice when I was praying about my next step in life. Even though I was doing well where I was at, I just felt led here. And it was here that for the first time in my life, I was really able to see God and how he weaves 
everything together perfectly in my life if I just surrender to what he wants. Which is ultimately better than anything that I ever imagined. And um, it, it was their openness and willingness to come alongside me and give me an opportunity to grow and an opportunity to, to get deeper with God and, and an opportunity to show me that, hey, there are people out there that are willing to give you more of themselves than anything I've ever experienced, you know, whether it be the job that I have, or the relationships that I've developed, and all those things. And I really didn't have to do much other than surrender to God and, and, and trust a few people that wanted nothing but the best for me. And after some time as a resident, you know, obviously my family, the relationships with my family were restored on their own pretty much. All I had to do was show up. Uh, I got a great job that was pretty much, I didn't have to really look forward, it, it fell right into my lap. You know, the story is much longer than I have time for. Um, and I was offered an opportunity to come and serve as the house manager here at the New Holland location, which has been probably the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. And I don't say that lightly, I mean, I've, I've served as a squad leader in an infantry unit in the United States Marine Corps, and this has been more rewarding than, than even something like that. You know, to really be able to come from a place of complete hopelessness and be able to be somebody that others look to for guidance or for support or even as a friend. And uh, I really don't regret anything I've ever done because it's led me here today where I am. Thank you, Gene, for sharing that story. It's our hope that there will be many in the future that find similar kinds of reasons for hope and find their way and, and again becoming part of a productive side of our community and actively involved in, in business and in community organizations and in the church. Uh, we're excited for Eugene and we have seen many others over the years, over the last 20 years, uh, who are now serving in many different capacities of leadership and community organizations, uh, supervisors on their jobs, and we believe that there are many uh, individuals out there, even on the streets today, that if we're given a chance could really prove the, to our community uh, that they have something to offer if they were just helped and, and given that opportunity, and that's what we're here for. We have a residential setting and they can uh, be here for uh, three months to 12 months as we walk with them, we coach them, we can't work with them in counseling and are uh, encouraging them along their way as they build a support team that will walk with them for the rest of their lives.